This is a Rai Forge Guard, and it's going to deal both direct damage and apply ailments, bleed and ignite. We don't really care how much damage that those ailments are dealing, in fact we just want to rip them off of the target in order to gain the Flame Drinker's Blade. You can see I have nearly 400 stacks of this buff. Flame Drinker's Blade allows the third strike of Rive to consume the ignite stacks on the target, and you gain 3% physical penetration per ignite stack. We had nearly 400 stacks, or almost 1200% physical penetration. Malin's Hubris allows us to convert 100% of bleed chance into ignite, further any amount of stacks that we can gain. Pair that with passive talents like Smelter's Might, and you can gain a high amount of bleed and ignite chance without any additional bonuses on your actual gear. Sunwreath, although actually intended to be used with mage builds, we can actually benefit from this as well. It's gonna get additional chance to ignite, which means more physical penetration. The increased fire damage over time is pretty minimal for us since we're pulling those stacks off, but the 14 melee fire damage adds a significant boost to the flat damage of Rive. Keep in mind the implicit property which offers 42% increased fire damage in this case is also really beneficial to other effects like healing hands. Healing hands, similar to other sentinel builds, will be transformed into a traversal skill and you've probably seen this somewhere if you've been looking at sentinel builds or even forge guard builds at this point. We'll be immune to damage while we use that traversing around where needed, but more importantly our melee attacks are going to have a 100% chance to also heal us on hit. We gain some additional spell damage and the increased healing effectiveness that we have on our character will also be converted to additional spell damage. Later we'll convert that over and scaling it into the melee damage that this character builds and all this will add up and since we'll always be in range of a melee attack we'll always be healing so if you're keeping up that means the faster you attack the more often you can heal in this case we're taking blade master for the passive tree this can allow us to have increased attack speed with a sword we can then couple that with molded by the forge which is in the final tier of the forge guard tree this will give you another 40% increased melee attack speed with a two-handed sword. Finally, we'll equip a two-handed sword and make sure that you're using either an exalted or a unique item that has had this grafted onto the legendary potential to benefit from all the increases of melee attack speed possible just from the weapon slot. It's also worth pointing out that we've got flat melee physical damage, and this is another way to benefit within the Rive Tree. You can get Folk Cleaver, which is going to allow two-handed weapon stats or stats on that weapon that directly add damage, increase damage, or apply an ailment on hit to have double effect with Rive. So in this case, we're double dipping on that flat melee damage. Now we can stand at the test dummies all day and we can be a stationary forge guard. However, that's not really practical. So let's go ahead and take this build to a spot that's gonna require us to move fairly often, like Empowered Lagan. Well, let's go ahead and wait for Lagan to line up his eye beam And once he does so, we'll use our healing hands to dash to the other side. Then we can throw Javelin, which is gonna give us a buff, not only in forms of being a passive buff that will then buff healing hands, but we can also use that to buff our damage output based on our attunement. We will have a little bit of attunement in this build, and there's even more you can get from your passive points as you become higher level. Just repositioning myself here so that I can use healing hands again to get to the other side of the map. Also have Sigils of Hope, which normally would proc automatically as we kill enemies. However, in this situation, we need to make sure that we're casting it ourselves, since there's nothing here to kill until we get to the second phase. As you can see, we managed to take down Lagan, and behind me, you'll even notice that Lagan had 30% increased health during that encounter. Now, it's certainly not the highest single target damage build we've ever seen. Forge Guard, unfortunately, is sort of towards the bottom of the list in terms of powerful classes. However, you can certainly get to the Empowered Monolith and still have some success if it's a class that you enjoy, or if you play Legacy and want to simply level one and have it in preparation for when it gets reworked, which is rumored to be happening fairly soon. Here we've jumped into a Wave Echo, and you can see that the Monolith Echoes themselves are actually pretty easy. You have enough damage and certainly enough attack speed to keep your character alive and get through all the packs, whether they're rare enemies or not. It's really just the single target bosses that you'll have a little bit of a slower time killing. And I don't say more difficult because you're so safe with this particular build. It's not necessarily difficult, it's just slower. So if that's something that you're okay with, then by all means this build will be very successful for you. As you can see, going through the Echoes, you'll be able to acquire many stacks of Sigils of Hope without directly casting it. Here we've got four, and we've also got these buffs called Scrap Metal that are generating as well. At times we'll have a numerous amount of these, but you'll see that they do generate Oftentimes you'll have between say three and eight of them while you're steadily attacking enemies. Each one of these stacks adds 3% damage to your Rive. So as you're going through and killing enemies or generating these, you'll actually deal increased damage. You can also directly use Forge Strike, which will give you a chance to summon these forged weapons on hit. And you can further increase the ability to do so from this as well. As mentioned earlier, you can actually deal additional melee damage while using Forge Strike and gain some additional armor as well. 
So it's not a bad idea to cast this simply as a buff. Here's the talent scrap metal, and this is under Rive. You're gonna generate a forged weapon. That means you're just gonna, in fact, turn it into scrap, and that's what's gonna allow you to do the additional damage, and it gives you some additional armor at the same time. Javelin makes its way into the build because one of the scaling tags is buff, and what that's gonna do is actually allow healing hands to scale even further. We'll get additional damage per level of specialized buff. On top of that, we can throw it down as a battle standard when we encounter high health targets or even bosses. This can allow us to do additional damage per attunement. As you can see, we do get some additional attunement throughout the build, whether that be from gear, passive points, and so forth. Sigils of Hope is also a buff, and this means that we get further benefit from that specialization node that Healing Hands offers. It does have a 6% chance to summon a sigil on kill, which will then boost our overall damage, our fire damage, and even give us an increased chance to ignite. When there's nothing in the vicinity that you can kill, like say on a single target boss, you can always cast this. We really have no risk of running out of mana with this particular build since Arrive actually generates mana. That means that prior to a boss, or as we work our way up, we can preemptively cast four of these Sigils of Hope, we can throw down a banner, we can even use a Forge Strike to give us a bonus as we open up on the target. Then we can refresh these whenever we need. So let's talk about some of the benefits that you get for actually selecting Forge Guard as your mastery. First are the passive bonus. The most important one here is 3% increased armor for each hit you have taken in the last 10 seconds. This will continue to stack. The more you're getting hit, the more increased armor you'll gain. Physical and fire resistance on top of that isn't so bad either. Through battle hardens, you can get some more physical resistance when hit and more increased armor when hit, just furthering the tankiness of this character. Increased armor when using a potion, and this has a fairly long duration of an extra four seconds of this increased armor. And on top of that, we take a reduced 15% damage from damage over time effects, lead to a very tanky character. When using a two-hander, you can also benefit from the unique armor Titan Heart, allowing you to take 15% less damage while wielding that two-handed weapon. And this is ultimately the reason from all these effects that I chose to go with a two-handed weapon as opposed to dual wield. I did experiment a lot with dual wielding weapons, not just the Eye of Reens that you see here, but many different weapon combinations. And overall, I found the two-handed weapon version more successful. If you are interested in some of the findings I had from dual wielding, I will say that Eye of Reen was very successful. You get the increased chance to ignite on hit, plus the increased flat melee fire damage, and on top of that, the buff that this has, providing you additional fire damage as you hit critical strikes, was really effective as well. However, ultimately it paled in comparison to the output that the Flame Drinker's Blade had for the, just the overall damage that Rive deals. And that brings us to Multi-Strike, because I did test this skill as well, and at first glance, you'd think Multi-Strike would be absolutely perfect for the Forge Guard. It has the ability to cast Smite, and the ability to cast Forge Strike automatically. With Multi-Strike, I tried melee versions, I even tried spell versions to capitalize on the spell damage that Smite would deal, and overall, Rive was just a more effective skill, and that's the reason why I eventually eliminated Multi-Strike from the build. At this point in time, the Forge Guard suffers a little bit from an identity crisis. If you want to use skills like Manifest Armor, Ring of Shields, or even the Forge weapons without sacrificing them, you really need to buff your minion damage or even your minion health. There simply aren't enough affixes in order for you to buff your own character and the minions at the same time, which means you either have to play incredibly passively while your minion targets things one at a time and takes them down, or you have to play a melee setup like this in order to have some success. The blessings on this character are far from perfect. In fact, I've just reached the Empowered Monolith and gone through a couple of them in order to improve them. I will continue to update this character and I even have some plans for the future of where this character may go. I have a variant from all of the things that I've been testing that seems to perform pretty well Unfortunately, the legendary potential on the unique item that I had in mind that really defined the build rolled very poorly, so until I find another replacement and happen to get a better roll on that, I'm unable to show the build off. To hasten the process, I've actually switched this character to the Merchant's Guild, so even the display of the character that you're seeing doesn't have any of the more powerful items that I have access to, and some of these are pretty lackluster for the build that I'm showing. I wanted to do this so that I could make use of all the gold that I've saved up in order to acquire the item that I'm looking for and show off the other version. I actually feel that that other version may have some success pushing 500 corruption. That being said, I will continue to push this character to higher levels and higher corruption. I want to upgrade these blessings so that it's ready when I can make the changes to the improved setup or the variant that I mentioned. After all, this is the only Merchant's Guild character that I have. I personally strongly prefer a Circle of Fortune, and this character will of course work with either, I'm just sharing my preferences so you can see why I only have rank 3. I do feel that this version is capable of pushing higher, likely between 2 and 300 corruption without any additional changes. Some improvements to gear which this setup can definitely use, however, the variant will definitely push higher than that. I've already tested it to a degree and really enjoy the setup, and it has a fun, similar playstyle to this, however it uses the minions. So check that video out when it comes if you have interest in playing the Forge Guard. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.